Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2021. It's question number two. Uh, this is a bit of a beast of a question. This has got um, collisions, so your momentum, conservation of the momentum work. It's got some kinematics a little bit later on down here. And then it's got some work involving forces and friction and F equals mu R. So real, real big question, this one. Let's break it down into all the little bits and just see how far we can get with it. So, uh, reading the very first part says, we've got a particle of uh, mass 2m, so we've got some sort of particle here, which is um, moving on a rough horizontal plane. Okay, that's going to be all the stuff later on. And it collides, so this is going in one direction. And what it's going to do is, if I just copy this, it's going to go and collide with a particle moving in the opposite direction. This one is P, this one is Q. Q has a mass of 4M. We know that P initially is moving with 3U and we know that Q isn't moving. So you can either, I'm just gonna do that, but zero on there, or you could have no arrow at all. And then this is the before diagram. So what's gonna happen afterwards? Well, I'll quickly use my iPad to at least make it a bit quicker to draw the diagram out again. So afterwards, we've got that P is now moving with a speed of V, we don't know what that one actually is. And we know that the other one is gonna move off with a speed of two U. So let's just quickly talk about what I've done here. I don't know that the particle will continue to move in that direction. It could take such a bump that it starts moving back the other way. But as long as I make a decision, and I'm gonna say V is going in that direction, if I'm wrong, all that will happen is when I calculate V, V will work out to be a negative. I could just as easily at this stage have said, I think it's going to be that way. And then if it works out to be a positive answer, I know that it was going in that direction. And the same as before, if I work it out and it works out to be negative, then I got my attempt wrong. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm sticking with this one. I would always um, leave objects going in the same direction and then see whether the math sorts it out. Okay, having said that then, we're trying to find V, so that's my um, variable V here, uh, immediately after the collision. So what I'm going to do is, looking at these, I've got this mass and this velocity, this mass, this mass and this velocity, this mass and this velocity. The only thing I don't have is that one, so I can just use the conservation of linear momentum, which I'm now going to write down. So using... I put CLM as an abbreviation for the conservation of linear momentum. And every time I write it down, simply because I want to get it into my head, I want to know this formula. So if I write it down every single time when I'm coming through and doing this, it starts to, and actually already now, I know that formula and I can just put it all in there. So once I've done that, I'm going to take one of the directions as positive. I'm going to take this way as positive as virtually everything's going in that direction at the moment, and I can just plug everything in. So I've got 2m times 3u plus 4m times nothing. You can put 4m times nothing, you can put just zero, you can just leave it blank, but I'm gonna do that, is equal to 2m times my v here that I'm trying to work out, plus 4m times 2u. So let's rearrange it all now. I've basically got 6MU is equal to 2MV plus 8MU. The M's always cancel in these sorts of questions, so it doesn't matter when you actually do it. If I rearrange all this, then I'm going to get minus 2U equals 2V. So V works out to be equal to minus U here. So what that's telling me then is that my assumption that it was going that way isn't actually accurate. It's gonna be going that way with the speed of u. That's fine, I leave my answer as I've just done there, 
And then they sort of asked me to clarify that with part B of the question, where they say, find in terms of you, that, that's what I've done. State clearly the direction of motion. So I can now say um, P is moving in the reverse direction. I'm not going to say left or right because I've, I've decided which way in my question there. So, but if I say it's moving in the opposite direction, it's moving um, in a direction that has been reversed, then that's nice and clear for the examiner. I'll get my marks for that. So let's change direction. Okay, right, this part C, this is a great question here. Following the collision, Q comes to rest after traveling a distance 6U squared over G along the plane, and it tells us that the coefficient of friction between the plane and Q is mu, find mu. So, well, let's not worry about finding mu first of all. Let's just see what I've got for this part C here. And to start off with, what I can do is I can use the information I've got there to work out what the acceleration is in all of this situation. So they told me that it traveled a distance 6u squared over g, and I know that it started off with a speed of 2u, but they want to know when it comes to a halt, so v will be equal to zero. That shouldn't be unusual for you. Acceleration is the thing I'm looking for. They haven't mentioned time at all. So every time I do a kinematics question, I always say what I'm hoping to get is four different variables of which I'm just looking for one. And that is what I've got in this situation here. So which formula connects S, U, V and A? It's one of the more often used ones. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So what I can now do is work out what acceleration is going to be. So naught is equal to, that's going to be, let's slow it down, that's going to be 2u all squared, two lots of acceleration times 6u squared over g here. Okay, so I'm going to get minus 4u squared is equal to 12a u squared over g. So again... The u squareds can cancel out here. We're quite useful. Uh, quite uh, often, we see things like the u's and the g's all cancelling, m's cancelling in other questions. So here, a is going to work out to be minus four over twelve. Or in other words, a works out sorry under g minus four uh, g over twelve, or rather minus g over three. Doesn't surprise me that it's a negative. It has to be a negative because it's slowing down to a stop, and also. Uh, a nice neat answer for what the acceleration is going to work out to be there. And now they're asking me to work out what mu is. So I'm going to quickly draw a diagram. I don't know whether I absolutely need this, but the force diagram in here then, what we're saying for this object is that we would have a reaction force and 4mg there if it's making contact with a plane, then we're going to have those situations and we've got this frictional force slowing it down. So the way that I do these questions is I resolve vertically first of all and when I resolve vertically I've just got these two forces acting and I know that they're going to balance each other out, they're in equilibrium. So I tend to say F equals MA but then I just jump straight into saying R is equal to 4mg. It's up to you the order in which you do these. I tend to do F equals mu R next, but I know that I'm basically going to get a couple of different formulae here and then just need to combine them. F equals mu R is nice and simple now then, so F is going to be mu times 4mg. And now what I'm going to do is to resolve horizontally this time and in this direction we've only got the f there so we're just going to get f equals ma in more complicated questions we have a combination of forces there but we're just going to get resolving horizontally f equals ma so we've got 
minus mu 4mg is going to be equal to 4mg over 3. Not minus mu, the minus and the uh, minus will just cancel each other out. So at that stage there then, as we've said previously, we can get things cancelling out. Actually, all of that's going to cancel out. Oops, let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. The 4mg and the 4mg are going to cancel out there. And I'm going to get mu works out to be equal to a third. So a really long question there, lots of different parts to that. Um, that's why it's worth you reading the question all the way through before we get started with one of those. Each little bit, hopefully, uh, does work out for you, um, but slightly unusual question. Hope it makes sense.